Sagittarius, welcome to my channel. This is Victoria at Radiant Moon Tarot, and we're here doing your October 2021 career and finance reading. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome to you. If you're returning, welcome back, and I'm truly grateful for each and every one of you. So let's get right into your reading. So in October, we've got a new moon on October 6th, which brings... Um, it is a new moon in Libra. All right. So it brings balance. It brings justice, truth, solutions, all of those wonderful things, and also highlights the need to focus on those areas. And then we have a full moon in Aries that comes up on October 20th. And that is known as the Hunter moon. And that really gives you the drive, the determination, the motivation, the M, the energy, and the stamina to really get things going, wrap things up, uh, close a chapter, move forward to a new chapter, all of those wonderful things, right? Really does give you that fiery Aries energy. All right, so let's get right into your reading. We've got the Unfinished Symphony, card number 10. So this is showing that there may be something that you are not quite done yet. All right, uh, you may have second chances. You may have another, another opportunity for uh, for something. All right, you may have thought that the opportunity had passed you by. So when we have Unfinished Symphony, this is showing that um, for some of you, there may be something that comes back around again. Maybe there was something that you saw an opportunity, but you didn't act on it at the time. Maybe you thought that it wasn't the right time and boom, here it comes again right in October for you. All right. So uh, bringing you back some sort of little bit of karmic justice, if you will. This also shows that there you may have a lot of things on the go. And when we have a lot of things on the go, sometimes we lose focus with, you know, if you have, say, five things on your plate, right? You may be a little bit scattered and you might not necessarily be focused on one thing at a time. So there may be a need there to, uh, you know, to concentrate on one project at a time if you can and uh, really wrap something up there. But Unfinished Symphony kind of shows that, you know, there is an end of a cycle, but there's something left that you haven't quite done. So for example, if you're looking to um, move on to a different department or if you are looking to change jobs, change careers, maybe there's something in your current uh, state of affairs that you need to finish before you can, how should we say, before you can move forward with a clear conscience. Right, And sometimes we don't want to leave things in disarray. We don't want to leave things um, half done, right? And not necessarily benefiting the company that you work for, especially if you're thinking of leaving, um, more to benefit you, like for your peace of mind, right? It's like, I like to leave things, um, leave things complete and neat and orderly, and then I can move forward and not have to worry or feel guilty about anything that I've left behind. But Unfinished Symphony really does show the need to um, get closure, to finish things, to um, pay your bills, to uh, leave no loose ends, no loose ties anywhere along the way, all right, and to try and complete one project before moving into another. Otherwise, you know, uh, you end up like um, like a friend of mine, her husband is notorious for starting projects that he never finishes, and he's got about 20 of them on the go, and he never gets anything done, right? He kind of abandons them at a time, and, you know, so, um, you know, so we don't want to necessarily necessarily go through life that way it gets messy and then we got to go clearing it up all right so there's certainly something there that you need to wrap up or finish or don't bite off more than you can chew we've got the fates coming in here as well I love this card this is so such a beautiful card this is card number 17 um, it actually does relate to uh, the star card in the tarot decks all right it also breaks down into an eight so some abundance there all right but when we have the fates this is fate this is karma this is accepting your current situation and knowing that there's things going on in the background and you may or may not be able to uh change or stop something or um 
influence something more than you already have at the current time. All right, it's not a negative, it's not a negative card. It's really kind of a little bit more of a neutral card in some aspects. All right, so there may be something that's going on that you have to kind of release control over. You've got to kind of take a little bit of a back seat to something. And sometimes, and that probably a little bit earlier in October, I would say, because by the time we get to that full moon in Aries on the 20th, that is the time to really grab the bull by the horns and make some change or improvements or complete things. Okay. And so when we really talk about, you know, the fates energy, um, this is probably more to do with the new moon energy, right? It is really more of a time to tap into the emotional aspect of things, to think about things, to set your intentions, to possibly um, do a little bit of time management, okay? Especially with the Unfinished Symphony, right? Um, it Almost like a little bit of patience, planning, research, all of those kind of things without necessarily the need for some outward action, Okay, and because sometimes the wheels are already in motion, it's a faded energy, right? So sometimes the wheels are in motion in something in the background, we don't necessarily, we can't necessarily see it uh, all the time, okay? And we also can't always influence it either. So there may be a need there to kind of uh, take a little bit of a step back on something, especially if you're manifesting, okay? Because it just shows that there is this, you know, the universe is doing its thing, Okay, and there's again, the wheels are in motion in an area and, you know, if we try and exert force or control, then we might actually um, stop something in its tracks that needs to unravel, that needs to happen. Okay, so uh, for example, if you're on a manifestation journey of any kind, right, this is showing you that yes, the universe is at work in the background. So back off, Jack, okay, release a little bit of control, don't obsess over what you have, uh, what you have been manifesting into your life. Okay, there is a need to attach positive emotion to it. There's a need there to really sit in the belief that things are going to um, present themselves to you exactly when they're meant to, all right, and that sometimes things unfold and unravel exactly as they're meant to without a necessarily um, a lot of influence on our part, all right, and the universe does not like to be micromanaged, okay, so uh, sometimes we get impatient, we get obsessive, right, with all of these uh, all of these things as human beings, the fear of missing out, we have instant gratification, right? And the universe doesn't quite work that way. All right. Sometimes, yes, big things happen all at once, but other times things unfold in their natural course and their natural flow of events. So we do need to allow that to happen. Um, the good, the bad, the ugly, right? Even if you find that doors are closing, trust and know that another one is going to open for you. All right. So it is ultimately, uh, you know, ultimately a beautiful energy, fake karma, whatever you've put out there is coming back to you. All right. All the good you've put out, the good comes back, right? Um, so, you know, so it really is one of a little bit of manifestation coming into play there. All right, but certainly that faded situation or a faded energy. Sometimes things are meant to be the way they're meant to be. So let's see what we've got for you guys. Thank you. I'm gonna pull all your cards and then I will explain. So current situation, the Ace of Cups. Well, lovely. The next thing I was gonna say with the Fates energy there is that um, we need to be open and we need to be ready to receive. The Ace of Cups is certainly one of being open and ready to receive. So crossing you, we've got the Six of Swords. There's that unfinished business. Beneath you, the Page of Cups. Recent past, the Two of Swords. Crowning you, the King of Cups. Look at you guys go. Telling you if this was a love reading, we'd be like bang smack on right there. Uh, we have, yeah, we have the Two of Cups in your near future. All right, you, your current attitude. Okay, we've got the Nine of Wands. That also comes out as Vice. 
advice, I should say. External influences, Five of Cups. Knight of Swords, Hopes and Fears. And overall outcome energy, we've got the Nine of Swords and we also have the Chariot there as well. So there's a little bit of there's a little bit of back and forth energy that is going on here. The Six of Swords that is crossing you, usually the Six of Swords is a rite of passage. Um, it is a transitional energy. It's one of moving forward, but with it being with it crossing you, there's something new trying to come in. Okay, or you are attracting something new, but again, the unfinished symphony is really playing a hand in the Six of Swords energy. There's something not either there is patience required because there's something new coming in it's just not here yet okay or it is one where there is a little bit of unfinished business before you put yourself out there okay or before you're ready to embrace something new the king of cups shows the king of cups and the two of cups really show that uh, like i said if this was a if this was a love reading this would be like whoa baby this is great stuff coming in but it's still great stuff coming in even in a uh, a career read because the king of cups and the two of cups really shows that you are looking to partner up with the right people you're really looking to have a positive emotional connection with what you do for a living um, you may already know somebody that you're looking to partner up with. Okay, you may already know what a certain opportunity may entail. I mean, look at all the cups energy, the ace of cups, the page of cups, the king of cups, the two of cups, right? But we do have some sadness and loss here influencing your situation with the five of cups. So it's like something is trying to come in or doors are trying to open or, you know, again, second chances may come around, especially where that, where that five of cups is concerned. All right, but we've got beautiful chariot energy. So there is a lot of uh, water energy that is coming out for you guys. All right, so it feels as though you are really trying to follow your heart. You're really trying to have an emotional connection with what you what you do for a living. So you either have that now and you're looking to improve it, or you may be looking for something better than what you either have or have had. All right, because we do have a nine of wands, which, which kind of shows an energy of being tired or being run down or not having the energy to get something done, right? Um, it can sometimes represent like a need to take a little bit of a step back and a time out, right? A recuperation kind of energy, okay? Because again, some of you have been through a little bit of a battle. You've had a little bit of a tough time, especially with the five of cups coming out there. All right, the two of swords, you may have had some difficult decisions um, to make along the way. Um, with the five of cups, there could have been, um, you know, there could have been or there may be a complete loss of something, okay, or at least feeling as though there's nothing going your way. So a lot of feelings that are really coming out in your reading, but let's just have a quick uh, look here. So the Ace of Cups is your current situation. All right. And the Ace of Cups does show first and foremost that there's something new coming in here for you, a fresh energy. Um, this is, it could be a new project. Okay. It could be um, a new partnership that's coming in. Uh, it could be that there's a new person coming into your workplace as well. And maybe they have um, an ability to uh, have a positive influence on your environment. And, you know, sometimes we sometimes our work isn't all that bad but we may have a really crappy manager and you know people will quite often either stay or leave for a good or a bad manager um, even if the job isn't a hundred percent what they want or it may, may not necessarily pay exactly what they want but sometimes people really do love who they work for and that is a great influence over whether they stay or not so the ace of cups there may be some new people okay or new management team coming into your environment and that may that may be preventing you from making a transition or from moving moving on or moving forward right and because you might be taking a little bit of a step back and taking a wait and see approach again we've got the fates coming in there so you know sometimes you know sometimes we've got that inkling to leave and then there's all of a sudden changes that are around us and we're like hmm you know what let's just take a little bit of a step back and let's see what happens right pause and reflect and before making like a snap judgment or a snap decision. 
but the Ace of Cups is also an energy of needing to be open and ready to receive new opportunities, new people, new situations, new jobs. Okay, it can even be improvements that may be headed your way. And the Ace of Cups shows that you are open and you are ready. The Aces are quite often a result of our manifestations. And, uh, you know, when we, uh, it shows that there is uh, things happening behind the scenes, whether they have actually hit you on the doorstep or not right at the moment. Because the Six of Swords is crossing you and the Six of Swords is a transitional energy. It is moving away from a turbulent or difficult situation into something a little bit more better or a little bit more better. Yes. <laughs> perfect English, um, a little bit better. Okay. Something that is more peaceful, more calm. Uh, so, you know, better times lay ahead. The six of swords is quite often a rite of passage. Okay. So there may be something that you are going through again, unfinished symphony, the fates, there may be something that you're going through at the moment that is necessary to complete um, in order to have that rite of passage, like a lesson that you may be learning, um, you know, a situation that may be difficult and may be challenging, but ultimately you need to wrap it up. You need to finish it. And it could be again, just for your own peace of mind. This brings in peace of mind, um, for your own sense of, um, accomplishment, Okay, and just something that is preventing you from taking that next step forward. All right, and you know, it could be that there's a conversation that needs to be had, right? There may be some closure that needs to be had somewhere along the way. All right, so whatever that means for you, the Six of Swords shows that there is movement forward that is either necessary and hasn't happened yet, again, may not be the right time, or there's something to complete, okay, or you're waiting for this right opportunity to come in, and then the second this opportunity um, presents itself to you, or you find your, your perfect opportunity, your perfect match, all right, then you're ready to get in that boat, and you're ready to move forward into something better. But it's a little bit of a patient it's a very patient energy that is coming that is coming um, from your reading, especially with all of the cups energy that's coming in. All right. Uh, you may be feeling very creative at this time as well. Right. And so maybe there's some creative endeavors that you've got or you need to take a little bit more of a creative approach to, um, you know, to your workplace. OK, or to your projects that you've got on the go. Right. And, you know, so but you're certainly a little bit, I'm not really going to say too much stuck in a rut, although you may feel as though you're stuck in a rut a little bit, but it could be that six of swords. It could be that you have not quite figured out what you want either. Okay. So sometimes when we aren't exactly sure, like we have an idea what we want, we have an idea you want, you may want something that does allow you to take a creative approach, something that allows you to maybe step into a leadership role, be your own boss even, okay? Um, you're also looking for a positive emotional connection with what you do for work, right? Instead of getting up for the, for work in the morning going, oh my God, I gotta go to work. I don't wanna go to work in five minutes in. It's like, is it time to go home yet? Right. We don't necessarily we spend so much time in our workplace. Right. It's, if you're sitting there looking at your watch five minutes after you getting there uh, your day just drags out. Right. And it's draining for you. So um, so you may know here because the aces are the seeds of opportunity. Right. That lead to ultimately success. So it could be that you just don't 100 percent know what that looks like right now, right? You know, you may want something better. You know, you may even want to move onwards and upwards in your current organization. But sometimes if we're unsure of what that looks like, the swords is all about communication and mental processes. And it can be that internally, we don't 100% know, where is this ship going to take me? Where do I want to go? I'm not sure. And so if we're not sure, we do know that we're attracting something in. But again, there's that need to take a little bit of a step back and either think about something a little bit more or, um, you know, uh, take a more, a little bit of, um, how should I say, 
a little bit of a passive approach because sometimes when we take a little bit of a step back and we don't think about something for a while and we think about something else or we keep ourselves busy doing something different, uh, quite often that's when we get those epiphany moments, those things coming in. And sometimes when we get that, that's when we get that flash of inspiration. All right, so you may be on that um, that that track, okay? Uh, the beneath you, the energy beneath you is the page of cups. And this is your subconscious. This is what's motivating you, what's moving you, what's driving you forward. This can sometimes be your deep past as well. So when we have the page of cups coming in here, the pages do quite often bring news, surprises come in with the page of cups. But they do also represent children as well. And with this position, sometimes uh, representing your long ago past, there may be some sort of um, career path that you may have a lot of talent, but maybe you didn't pursue it. And sometimes when we're younger, we, uh, we do get told, you know, especially if you are artistic in any kind of way, um, you know, sometimes let's say, let's say you're an incredibly talented, let's say you're a talented musician. Okay. Uh, who doesn't want to be a rock God, right? You're a legend in your own mind when you're driving in your car to work, right? Singing at the top of your lungs and all this kind of stuff. You can envision yourself on the stage, all those things. But let's say, for example, that you have musical talents and, you know, years ago, maybe you've kept up with it in the background and as a hobby, but maybe long ago, someone told you, no, you need to abandon your dream because you don't want to be a starving musician. You need to go out there. You need to get an education. You need to have a job. All of these things you are taught to kind of conform and work in like the nine to five kind of structure. So there may be something, some sort of talent that you had, again, like musician, artist, uh, carpenter, something to do with your hands maybe, all right, whatever that happens to be, a writer, right? Um, you know, all of those professions, right? The, the artistic kind of professions, uh, you know, it, people have the notion that you can never make money at it. And so there may be something there that may be stirring within you and you might really be wanting to revisit that, right? Okay, so if that, you know, if that's you, right, we are unfortunately always put into a box unless you happen to come from like an entrepreneurial family or a little bit more of a free-spirited family. And then sometimes you're encouraged to follow those paths and because eventually you'll end up making money, right? But at least you'll be incredibly happy. So if you are considering doing that, there may be that opportunity to move forward with that. But the Page of Cups also does represent the need, the desire to uh, love what we do. And, you know, you may be, um, you know, you're certainly, uh, certainly with this energy, you're are looking for that emotional connection with what you do for a living, with what you do for work. And, you know, and again, it's, uh, it can be hard to find sometimes, right? And, but you may just have that opportunity coming in, right? Whatever it is that you are looking for that you're manifesting into your life. And that page of cups brings in excitement. It brings in creativity. Um, you know, it brings in that really positive emotion, that positive vibe. Um, but motivating you, moving you forward, the pages representing children as well. It can be that you, um, at least somebody out there, uh, your priorities may have changed. And if you have, uh, if you have gotten married, gotten engaged, um, you know, it might be a second marriage. Okay. And there may be children involved in some way Either you're thinking of starting a family. Uh, you may have already started a family, blending your families, whatever that happens to be children involved in some way. And you know, you, your priorities on what you do for a career may have, um, maybe just a little bit different than they have been. So, you know, you're looking for something a little bit different. Maybe you've got a little bit more freedom. And especially if you have partnered up with somebody, um, you know, or gotten married, uh, maybe now you've got a dual income situation that you may not have had before. And that allows you that little bit more uh, freedom to find something that is really interesting for you. 
The two of swords is in your recent past. So the two of swords, the, the recent past time can be a little bit fluid and the recent past can be yesterday. It can be a week ago. It can be a couple of months ago. Okay. And the two of swords, it really shows that you may be at a little bit of a crossroads. Um, and so either there's some um, important decisions that you have made, okay, or depending on when you see this reading, you may still be in decisive mode, all right, and the Two of Swords does show that there are important decisions that need to be made, and, you know, the, sometimes we don't want to make them, right, and it could be that, you know, you are considering changing your careers, okay, or, you know, you are a little bit unsure of where you want to go or what you want to do. All right. And sometimes the two of swords, this particular deck doesn't quite show it, but usually the two of swords, we show someone holding up these big, heavy swords, swords, heavy decisions. All right. But also having a blindfold on, right. And that blindfold can usually be interpreted a couple of different ways. One of them being having the blinders on, knowing that you need to make a decision, having the gut instinct that you need to, um, you know, that you need to choose an option Okay, or, you know, do I stay? Do I go? What career do I want? What don't I want? All of these things. And sometimes we put the blinders on because we just, ugh, it's like, I know I need to do something. I know I need to make some change. Um, but I just don't want to deal with it right now. So sometimes we've got the blinders on a little bit. Okay, so sometimes we need to see things with a little bit more clarity. But the blindfold that's usually on can also represent the need to go within and to make our own decision. Trust our intuition. Trust our uh, trust our feelings as well. And we don't necessarily need external input. And because ultimately... You know, people come from a, um, people usually, when people give you advice, they usually come from a place of wanting to help. And, you know, but unfortunately, what happens is, you know, even though they, they come from a good place, good hearted uh, kind of energy, but, you know, when they give advice, it's based on their past experiences and based on what their goals would be and what they would want. And one of the most prevalent ones is when people tell us that we shouldn't or can't do something. What they're actually doing is showing us their limitations, not ours. So when we have the two of swords, quite often that is that energy of going within and trusting ourselves to make a decision and not necessarily needing or wanting anyone else's external input. And with the Six of Swords crossing you here, okay, some of you may still be trying to figure things out, trying to figure out what path you want to take or, you know, you have had to make a decision and now you know you need to move forward and you're just waiting for that right opportunity, okay? So uh, the Two of Swords can be, you know, um, uh, definitely one of trusting yourself okay to make that make that right decision that is good for you okay but again the two of swords quite often represents being at a crossroads so again we do have uh you know we do have some very loud relationshipy cards that are coming out here so the two of swords being at a crossroads again you may have a uh you know romantic partnership Okay, or starting a family, expanding your family, and that could have really thrown you for a loop a little bit, right? It's like, wow, my life is about to change for the better, and now my priority is a little bit different. So that throws you in that Two of Swords energy of being at something of a crossroads, right? So, um, you know, um, and but quite positive though, right? Especially with the cards that are coming around. Crowning you, your goals, your thoughts, your possibilities. We've got the King of Cups. And the King of Cups is a leadership energy. All right. It is a very romantic energy as well. So I got to say, so yes, some of you, your uh, personal life certainly affects your career choices, right? And why shouldn't it? 
right? Why shouldn't it, right? We spend a lot of time in our workplace, right? So, you know, that really does have an impact on our personal life. But the King of Cups in your crowning position really shows that you are ready to take the lead and you are ready to either make improvements in your current situation or find something that you really love and something that really highlights and showcases your skills, your talents, your abilities, and something that may even put you in a bit of a leadership role as well. The kings are leaders. And if you look back in history, the kings, you know, the kings conquer their kingdom, right? They take charge, but they also devise a strategy. They know when to protect and they know when to defend and they know when to take charge and take action, right? They know when to go into attack mode and they know when to go into um, defense mode, right? And so there may be something that, you know, for one, the King of Cups shows that you need to take action and you need to take a leadership approach and you need to take charge of your own career path. This also shows that some of you have some lofty goals, right? And, you know, you want to love what you do, absolutely. But you may also um, be really fitting for a leadership role. And, you know, Sag, you, you know, you are, you have the ability to bring balance into situations. And with the King of Cups there, you may have the real capability there of being an incredibly emotional, intelligent leader. Somebody who real rules with, or rules, <laughs> rules your kingdom, okay, um, but who leads, that's probably a better word, um, who leads with empathy, with kindness and compassion, Okay, but you also have that fiery side to you, right? No one's going to walk all over you. No one's going to, you know, treat you like a doormat in any way, but you know when to be empathetic and when to be kind and you know when to take charge and you know when to take action, tap into the fiery side of you. So, you know, when we have the balance of fire and water, right, we get some great alchemy there. So you may have some great leadership skills and some great talents as that kind of leader, right, who you know exactly what side of yourself to tap into and when. And not a lot of people, um, not a lot of people really have that gift. And it really is a gift. It's a skill. It's a talent. And, you know, if you have had a, a, you know, a long career, okay, or even if you're starting out in your career, you either have found or you will find that not all people in a leadership position actually deserve to be there. And just because you're good at your job doesn't mean you you make a good manager, supervisor, or leader, right? But with the energy coming out here, you likely have the ability to do that. And that may be something that you know already, okay? Or that's something that's presenting itself as a possible possibility for you when it's in your crowning position. It does show your thoughts, all right? It shows your conscious thoughts, your goals, your thoughts, and but also your possibilities, Okay, so you may, it may, uh, you know, the tarot is great for that, showing you kind of like saying, hey, I have an idea. I think this may actually be a great path for you. All right, so if you don't already know that, that may spark a little bit of something inside you, if that is you. But the King of Cups also shows, I already did mention a little bit uh, a little while ago, um, I'm getting the energy that some of you may have some changes in your current organization if you're working. And you may have been about to leave, okay, um, and you may be thinking that way, but maybe someone new has come in, a new manager, new ownership, something like that, maybe the company restructured, and before making a rash decision, um, you may be taking a little bit more of a step back and a wait and see kind of approach, right? Let's just see what happens. Let's see if they live up to their promises, right? Let's see what's going on before, you know, before I jump ship, right? Before I, I hightail out of here. And, you know, and again, sometimes that can make all the difference in the world, right? Especially if you already like what you do. 
okay? Or the company's maybe not that bad, or you like your coworkers, or you like the actual work that you do, right? So, um, you know, so you might be taking that wait and see approach, okay? Because that King of Cups can absolutely represent a person that you're dealing with. The Page of Cups beneath you can represent the news of this new person that has come in, right? And so again, you might just be kind of like, hmm, let's see how this plays out, right? Let's see what happens, right? Because they talk the talk. Let's see if they can walk the walk. Your near future is the two of cups and this shows balance and harmony. It also shows you partnering up with the right people. So this ace of cups that's coming in here, all right, there may be an opportunity here to go into partnership with somebody, to um, collaborate with somebody in your workplace even, right? Because you could have a new project that is really up your alley, right? Something that will eventually lead to um, recognition and rewards for what you have accomplished and for what you've done, right? And something that may even eventually lead to that promotion. So you may have this brand new opportunity, a creative project, an endeavor of some sort where you may actually partner up with somebody in your current workplace and you really work well together and you just, uh, you know, you're really moving on, you're really moving forward and you're getting stuff done and it's a very symbiotic kind of relationship. For others of you, I feel as though with this Ace of Cups coming in, this is either, um, you know, either partnering up with a new company, a new organization, even partnering up with someone in business, especially the King of Cups energy that's there. Um, you may be starting your own business, okay, or welcoming someone into your fold there, right? And you're really, again, working well together. Kindred spirits, if you will. I mean, the Two of Cups is quite often known as the soulmate card, right? But um, you can have soulmates in all aspects and all areas of your life, right? Not necessarily just romance, right? So, um, you know, so we can absolutely partner up with people that we are meant to be with. Again, faded energy that's coming in here, especially with that Ace of Cups. So there's something very... Uh, positive and very um, emotionally fulfilling that is coming in. So a lot of a lot of improvements that are certainly coming in here for you. And, you know, again, that two of cups really does show either balance and harmony is restored in your current situation. So maybe taking a, a step back, a wait and see kind of approach. If you have a new people in your organization, that may actually pay off for you. All right. And they may actually see you for, you know, all of the um, everything that you bring to the table. And, you know, sometimes taking that step back really does pay off for us. Right. But this can also be, again, of course, a new situation that's coming in there that is incredibly positive for you and something that you have been hoping for, waiting for, that you've been ready for. All right. So either something in your current situation or something brand new altogether. Your nine of wands is coming out as you, your current attitude, also advice that you would give to yourself. The nine of wands is absolutely that take a step back and wait and see kind of approach to things. Um, the nine of wands shows that you've been through some battles, some struggles, some ups, some downs, and but ultimately you have weathered the storm. You're still standing. You're still on both feet there. So with the nine of wands, it is often a reminder as advice that sometimes we need to take a little bit of a step back and we need to survey the landscape a little bit before making a decision or before taking our next steps forward. The nine of wands also shows that there may be some sort of boundaries that you need to put in place somewhere. This can be boundaries with yourself. Boundaries start at home. Okay. But this can also be boundaries, um, you know, in your current environment, right? And those wands standing in the ground there, right? Those do represent a little bit of uh, protection mode, okay? Um, but those boundaries that we may need to put up or that we already have put up, right? Because it can represent putting our, ourselves behind a wall or defending, okay? Defending what we have already built, all right? And it's not one of necessarily, you know, out, outward force. It is one of like standing our ground a little bit in some way. It's like, no, this is my desk. You can't have it. And so you might be like, no. So, um, you know, so in some way there may be a little bit of uh, self-protection 
Okay, that is that is coming out there. You may be feeling that you need to protect yourself in some way. Okay, so um, but the nine of wands really does show that you know you've been through a difficult time, but again. There's a lot of positive things that are coming in and that are opening up for you. All right. And, you know, so, um, you know, but again, it's this little bit of um, patience, hesitation, uh, taking in more a step back, right? There's, again, a lot of emotions, a lot of feelings going on here and a lot of um, introspection. And a lot of kind of a little bit of wait and see. Your external environment, we've got the Five of Cups. So the Five of Cups does show a loss. Okay, now this could be a temporary loss. It could be just a little bit of a down patch. It could be that your current situation, you're really not feeling all the feels. But there's still opportunities here to improve the Five of Cups. We've got three cups. Actually, in this particular deck, we only have two cups spilt over and we've got three still standing. Traditional imagery is three cups spilled over and two cups still left standing. What are those two cups, right? Uh, is it the two of cups? Actually, if we put the ace of cups with the two of cups, then we get those three still standing. So again, for some of you, there may be a second chance for something. You may have an opportunity to revisit something, okay? Uh, an opportunity that you thought was lost may actually present itself to you again. Um, you know, it could be that you didn't take action on something and it wasn't the right time, wasn't the right circumstance. Again, unfinished symphony, something that you needed to complete before you move forward with something. Okay. And whatever that happens to be, there may be something that comes back around again. But the Five of Cups does show a bit of sadness, um, feeling rejected, feeling as though there is a loss. So, you know, it can be that, you know, if you're looking for a job, let's face it, um, you know, in some areas, the job market is really crappy. In other areas, man, oh man, uh, if you're looking to make a career change, now is the time. So it really depends what country you're in, what uh, what state province, county, or whatever it is that you've got, um, where whatever uh, geographic area you happen to be in, um, even what industry that you may be interested in, because for some people, now is a buyer's market. It is a employee market. Employers in some areas are screaming for people to come back to work. Um, in other areas, of course, you're, it's a little bit more challenging, right? And, you know, there is high unemployment in some areas as well, and maybe not a lot of opportunities. So when we've got the five of cups, you may need to go on a few interviews and there may be a couple of no's before you finally get the yes. Okay, it's a little bit of an up and down energy. But when we have the Five of Cups, it does represent that there's a little bit of a challenge uh, somewhere in our environment. Okay, this is not you. This is the energy around you, the energy external influences. Okay, your environment even. Okay, so again, the Five of Cups does show that there are some ups and downs, that there are some challenges. There may be some no's before you get the yeses. Okay, there may be some rejections before you finally find the one, it's the way that it goes, right? And, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully a lot of you don't necessarily have a lot of experience on going on interviews, right? And, you know, sometimes we go on a couple of, we go on, you know, three, four, five interviews, oh, five, there you go, um, before we finally get a yes, right? And, you know, um, but interviews, we don't get a lot of practice with them necessarily, right? Because so you get a job, hopefully you hold on to it for a while, and hopefully it's a few years before you have to go on another interview. All right, but, um, you know, but I feel ultimately there's something positive that comes out of it. So when we have the Five of Cups, there is a reminder coming in there from Spirit that there are opportunities and there is a lot of positive things that are going on in our environment, but we need to focus on them. 
And sometimes we end up focusing on the problem or what we don't have rather than focusing on what we want and what we do have. So, you know, so there is that energy of opportunities there, but again, there may also be some challenges as well. And for those of you whose company is going on a restructure, okay, that five of cups shows that yes, there may be a little bit of downsizing. There may be some people that lost their, that lose their jobs. There's some sadness that's involved there with that five of cups. But again, you may actually uh, find opportunities that come out of a negative situation. And it could be that you, uh, you know, some of your colleagues may lose their jobs. You may actually keep yours and you could actually find yourself in a higher position than what you expected before you but again it comes with some sadness right a little bit of guilt that might come with that as well because someone had to, we know that someone had to lose something for us to get something and that five of cups energy kind of shows that yeah, you got to take the good with the bad right uh you know when life gives you lemons make lemonade and sometimes you do come out on top and it's not by your hand it's not by your doing all right sometimes the chips just fall where they may all right so uh the five of cups does represent a bit of a challenge but it also represents an opportunity for change remember all of those five cups are not spilt over so um so there is a need there to focus on what we want focus on how to move ourselves out of a difficult situation or be thankful and be grateful if, you know, you're one of those people that did not lose their job in a company restructure and, you know, be thankful and grateful for that. And yes, you know, your feelings, if you're feeling guilty or you're feeling sad that some of your colleagues are gone, uh, you're, there's some, you know, a little bit of turbulent energy there, right? A little bit of ups and downs. Um, process your feelings because they're valid. All right, but then you need to move forward with, you need to move forward and you need to embrace the positivity that may come out of that for you. Okay, so um, it can be that that five of cups, if if there is a loss for some of you out there, because it can represent a loss, um, if there is a loss for some of you out there, but you've kind of been in iffy mode anyway, this may be uh, the universe's way of pushing you forward. All right. And sometimes we're just hesitant to make a change, make a move because humans don't ultimately like change, right? We're creatures of habit, most of us. And, you know, but if you've been indecisive for a while, the five of cups, some sort of invol uh, involuntary loss may give you that uh, kick in the pants that you've needed. All right. Your hopes and fears. We've got the Knight of Swords. All right, so the Knight of Swords is one of taking action. It's taking the bull by the horns. It's moving forward, um, knowing what you want and doing what you need to do to get it done. Uh, the Knight of Swords um, ultimately represents news, messages, communication, um, typically very positive. So, you know, it feels as though here, because this is your hopes and your fears, some of you may have a fear of, um, change, uh, a fear of success. Okay. Cause the Knight of swords always, always gets what they're looking for. Okay. Um, but sometimes we can be a little bit hesitant to take action on something, right? We're afraid of taking action because what if where we are right now is as good as it gets, Right. And so sometimes that can hold us back a little bit, but ultimately it feels you're really hopeful that you can move forward, that you can have some positive change that you're in your circumstances will improve or that you can communicate um, with whoever that you need to communicate with. All right. Yourself as well. Now, the Knight of Swords, if you're going on interviews, Okay, if you're going on interviews, the Knight of Swords, um, yes, it ultimately does, uh, is a one of communication messages, right? Putting yourself out there and, you know, what, but the Knight of Swords tends to be a little bit, um, how shall I say, in the most positive aspect possible, a little bit gung-ho, a little bit rash. Okay, so, you know, 
again, we'll, we'll touch on the interview subject again, right? Because that's about communication. And yes, the Knight of Swords would have a very successful interview. We are currently on Mercury retrograde. And so with the Knight of Swords coming out, there may be uh, a need, just make sure if you're going on interviews, just be really well prepared and don't try not to blurt anything out. Okay, so go in a little bit prepared. Um, if someone asks you a difficult question, as they always do, okay, if they ask you a difficult question, just uh, kind of take a little bit of a breath first before blurting something out. Think before you speak, shall we say, because one of those fears could be, you might have a fear of going into interviews, right? Again, we don't get a lot of practice necessarily. So, you know, just prepare, prepare before you go in and then you will, you can ultimately be successful. Okay. And again, you may go through a couple of no's before you get your yes, because that's just the way things happen. Okay. Unless you're really, unless you're really fortunate and you get that perfect opportunity, the right place, the right time, the right circumstances, the perfect interview, all of those things. And, uh, you know, come out guns a blazing right at the very beginning, but the Knight of Swords there, especially with the retrograde uh, that we've got going on, make sure that you are well prepared for an interview or for any other communication that you need to have, okay, just so that you can get your ducks in a row and so that you can kind of ground your energy a little bit because we've got a lot of emotional energy that is coming out here, a lot of water coming out in your sign. So sometimes if we get our emotions, uh, if we let our emotions get the best of us, right, sometimes we, our communication doesn't come out exactly the way that we want it to. So before you go on an interview, um, you know, ground yourself, prepare yourself, and then you can go in there on a, a much more, with a much more confident note about you. Okay. Same thing if you are um, putting your resume out there as well, uh, especially with the retrograde that we've got, just make sure that you, uh, pass it to a friend to review or something like that, or run your spell check, please, please, please run your spell check. Okay. Um, spell check and grammar check. Okay. Uh, run both of those. Okay. Just double check, triple check your resume, your cover letter. A cover letter is sometimes very important depending on what you've got going on. All right, because it can help you stand out in a crowd. A lot of people are lazy these days. And, you know, if you've got your job search going on, like Indeed or something like that, right, you can hit your, your, um, you can just with a click of a button apply for a job. But when you do a res, a, a cover letter, it can help you stand out in a crowd. So communication is very much highlighted in that regard. Okay. So just double check and just make sure you double check what you put out there. All right. So your overall outcome, we've got the nine of swords and we've got the chariot. So the chariot overrules your nine of swords. It trumps it as this energy. This is Cancerian energy with the chariot. And this is moving forward, taking charge, taking action, being very successful by your own will, your drive, your determination to succeed. All right. Yes, you may have some anxiety. You may have some worries, some doubts even with the nine of swords coming in here, but the chariot's like, come on, man, let's get going. Let's get, let's take the bull by the horns and let's take some action. So a really more powerful version of that knight of swords. So the chariot is a, a bit of, um, the chariot is where you take the reins and because you are in alignment Okay, this shows that you're moving towards your destiny. You're on your right path. Okay, it's um, that's where destiny, where fate steps in to help you out. Okay, and to help you move past any fears or doubts or worries that you may have and stand in your personal confidence, stand your ground, move forward, take that inspired action. Okay, the chariot is one of you knowing what you want and moving forward. And it's about time, right? Because we've got a lot of not necessarily so much stuck cards here, but we've got some very slow moving cards here for you throughout most of the month, right up until we get that chariot energy coming in. It's like, bam, 
Now I know what I want. I've done all my thinking. I've done all my feelings, right? I've done all of this and I finally know. And this is where you take that action. You take charge and you um, are ultimately very successful. The chariot brings in success and victory. All right. But it's by your own actions. Okay. And the energy that is coming in infuses you with self-confidence. All right. And you know, with that Cancerian energy again, in water, 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 water everywhere. Okay. So, you know, so, um, you know, so if you're feeling the retrograde energy, the mercury retrograde energy, again, just double check your communications, uh, verbal, written, anything. Okay. Just make sure you've got all your ducks in a row. All right, especially the spell and grammar check if you're submitting written documentation for anything. All right, but um, you know, it feels as though you're really, really um trying to make sure that you are happy, okay? And there is happy that is coming in here for you. All right, so um, but ultimately success is yours for the taking. All right. Once you know what you want, once you get your ducks in a row, right? All of those things. That's what that chariot energy brings in. So I'm going to leave that there for you guys, but I'm going to close out your reading with a couple of last cards. These are making magic cards. So last messages, please, for Sag. Thank you. And first out, we have trust. Uh, card number 31, I am safe, I am secure, in love I trust, my faith endures. Trust in yourself to make those decisions that you need to make, to communicate, to put yourself out there, to get things done, to overcome challenges and hurdles. Trust, 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 have faith in yourself, all right, and in the universe as well. And then we have study coming in here as well. Let my mind be clear and strong. Let me study well and long. Um, you know, you may have, you may be doing some research on something as well. Okay. And, you know, again, that might be part of, you know, part of the patient, uh, slower moving energy. Okay. Some of you might need to do your homework a little bit. You might need to research things a little bit. Okay. But your mind is clear. Your mind is sharp. And once you make decisions, boom, that gets that chariot moving forward. You know exactly what to do. All right. I'm going to leave that there for you guys. I hope there was something in this reading that uh, resonated with you in some way. If there was, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you have a great month. I thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.